wanted to share with you guys some of my favorite ground beef recipes. These are recipes that I have made over the last year and a half that are my absolute favorite. I have 20 in this video, so I hope that you guys enjoy it. Let's go ahead and get started. All right, to get us started, the first one that I wanted to share with you guys is beef enchiladas. It's actually one of my favorites, and I've been making it this way since my mom taught me how to make them. I love making beef enchiladas. Um, so I just need a pound of ground beef. I'm just going to ground that up until it's nice and cooked through. I'm also going to drain off any excess grease, and then I'm going to bring it back to our stove. I'm going to put in one ounce of taco seasoning. And then I'm gonna give that a good stir. I, whenever I make beef enchiladas, I always seem to forget the uh, taco sauce. Instead, I just go like straight to the, the enchilada sauce that I'm getting ready to share with you guys. So don't skip this step because you will definitely taste the difference if you don't add the taco seasoning. I need one 10 ounce can of red enchilada sauce. And yes, it has to be Old El Paso because I've tried other sauces and they are just not good. So I love using that one. I'm also going to add in some cheese. I usually add about three-fourths a cup of shredded up cheese. And then um, you guys can kind of mix and match whatever you guys prefer. I love to add black beans, one can of rotel, and then like a cup of corn. Now this one, when I made this, this was like a five ingredient type of a dinner. So I didn't add those. I just added the black beans. But you guys can kind of customize this to to however you would prefer. And then this usually makes about six to 10 um, enchiladas, kind of just depends on how much you fill your tortillas. I think this one made about six. So I'm just filling up all my tortillas, laying them in a nine by 13 casserole dish. And then I'm gonna take one more small can of the red enchilada sauce and just put that right on top. You wanna make sure that it's all, all of your tortillas are nice and covered. And then once that is done then we're going to add just a little bit more cheese i love to add like the mexican blend cheese usually that's just um, <laughs> my preference when it comes to um, mexican dishes i love using like that fiesta or like a taco blend of cheese and that's it you're going to put this in the oven at 375 degrees for exactly 30 minutes because i like my enchiladas to be a little bit on the crispy side on the very very ends and so that's what these turned out to be. I love to make some like rice and some salsa with some chips. I love to put sour cream and salsa on top of my enchilada. Makes this enchilada absolutely phenomenal. Okay, next is gonna be bow tie lasagna. So I need 12 ounces of bow tie noodles. And we're gonna start off by using that and just letting that get till it's al dente. And then I kind of push it off to the corner just so I have more workspace. Um, and then I am actually using a pork sausage uh, when I'm filming this, but um, sausage is kind of universal. Like I use sausage all the time in replacement for ground beef. It's cheaper and it just kind of tastes better for certain different things and I thought for lasagna you could do beef or you could do sausage and so that's why I wanted to share with you guys this meal I'm also gonna add one block of cream cheese and I just cubed it up so it's easier to kind of um, mix together And then once it is all mixed together, then I'm actually going to add in our marinara sauce. So you're just gonna need one jar of marinara sauce, which usually is about 24 ounces, and you're just gonna give that a good stir. Okay, and then by then our noodles should be ready to go. So I'm just going to, as the best that I can, slowly mix this together. Um, it's kind of hard because my pan is about to overflow. So just be careful with that. Or make sure you get like a bigger um, pan if you are making this. Mine was definitely not big enough. <laughs> okay, and then to a nine by 13 pan, I'm just gonna put it in there, kind of even it out, and then I'm gonna put about a cup and a half of mozzarella cheese right on top of that. Just kind of level that off as well. You don't have to use a cup and a half. You can do a half a cup or a cup. It's whatever you guys prefer. Um, I 
did about a cup and a half and then I'm just smoothing it out. It was kind of on the frozen side so you can kind of see me try to uncrumble it. And then I'm going to put this in the oven at 350 for 30 minutes and this is what it looked like. It was so creamy. I love a cream cheese with marinara sauce. I just think it is one of the best dishes out there. I made several different varieties of like using marinara sauce with cream cheese and it's just so creamy. I just really, really enjoy it. Um, and then I just paired this with some green beans and I think we also had like some sliced bread and called it good. So, so good. It would also go really well with some salad. Next is one of my favorite things to have, which is taco salad. So this one's pretty simple. I just have to get some things prepped and ready to go. So the first thing I wanna do is get some cheese ready to go. So about a cup worth of cheese if I'm feeding my whole family. And then also I'm gonna get some lettuce ready to go. I like to have this iceberg lettuce and then just kind of shred it up. Also romaine is like one of my favorites. Those are like my top two to have. Um, so I'm just getting that chopped up. I'm also going ahead and getting a pound of ground beef. I'm also going to put some taco seasoning, about an ounce of taco seasoning in with a little bit of water and just basically stir that together. And that is really the, all that I need for my meal. I do like to have some black beans with it, maybe a little bit of tomatoes. So if you guys like those type of things, then you can get that prepped and ready to go. And I just put my taco meat on a bed of lettuce. I put the cheese, the black beans, some salsa some sour cream a lot of times I'll do Catalina instead of sour cream and salsa but that is it this was our meal today and it's a really great lunch or you can have it for dinner as like a super quick and budget-friendly meal up next are cheeseburger sliders so the first thing I need to do is our pound of ground beef and get that cooked through um, you want to make sure it's nice and brown if you guys like adding onions or any type of Worcestershire sauce with this this is gonna be a delicious meal to do that with um, usually I will do about a teaspoon of Worcestershire sauce sh 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 <laughs> it's, so, it's so hard to say and then I'll just stir it together until everything is nice and cooked through also added one teaspoon of pepper, one half of a teaspoon of salt and stir that together as well. And then once that is cooked through, I'm just going to set that to the side. You also want to make sure that you don't have any grease with the ground beef, so definitely make sure to get all the grease off of it. And then you just need one package of rolls. I just have these this 12 count and so I'm going to take the rolls and I'm just going to cut them in half the best that I possibly can. I am not the best about cutting bread in half like that. And then I'm going to take a 9 by 13 dish and um, I'm going to place the bottom half on there. And then I have my ground beef mixture that I'm just going to put right on top of that. I love these little platters. They are so good. I know I've talked about them several times, but I love them. We mainly have them for salad. And so we've been on the market for like a good salad dish instead of like these little Corel bowls that we have. So this one is perfect for salads. And then I'm going to take about a cup and a half of cheddar cheese or you can do like sharp anything like that and put it right on top and if you want to guys want to put some pickles on there that would be really good too I also took three tablespoons of butter and melted it I'm going to put that right on top and if you guys want to do like a garlicky butter that would be delicious as well or even like some parsley in it that would be amazing I just did plain butter and just putting it right on top I know a lot of um, meals, they will say to do like a Worcestershire sauce with like a honey Dijon and like poppy seeds. So there's so many different um, avenues that you can do to put a topping on rolls. I just did plain old butter and it turned out perfect. It was so delicious. I put that in the oven for about 20 minutes and this is what it came out to look like. So, so good. The cheese was nice and melty. My family devoured this. They loved it so much. They wanted me to keep making it and making it and we just had ours with like some fries and um, some baked beans. Up next is sloppy joe casserole. So to a little bit larger of a pan, you're going to put in one pound of ground beef and a half a cup of diced up onion. And you just wanna cook that up until it's nice and brown. And then once you drain off all the excess grease, you're gonna put in one can of tomatoes. I just did petite tomatoes. And then two and a half cups of chicken broth and one can of sloppy joe mix. 
or sauce, however you want to say it. <laughs> and then you just give that a really good stir. Okay, and then you're just gonna let that come to a simmer. Once that has come to a simmer, we're gonna go ahead and put in our dry pasta. So I have 12 ounces of bow tie noodles, and I'm just going to kind of submerge them so that um, they are all um, submerged <laughs> into that liquid there. And then we're gonna put the lid back on and let that cook for about 15 minutes until the noodles get nice and al dente. Once they have become nice and soft, I'm gonna add one can of corn and one cup of cheddar cheese. I'm also gonna give that another good stir. And once all that is stirred through and the cheese has melted, that is all that you need to do. This dinner is complete and I just paired this with some bread and that was all that we had. This is a great budget meal. My family really enjoyed this meal. You could also have like a side salad with it. It was so, so good and so hearty. We really enjoyed this sloppy joe casserole. Okay, for Manhattan beef, all I'm gonna need to do is get started on some mashed potatoes. So I have a bunch of red potatoes that I just went ahead and peeled off the skin and I'm just gonna make mashed potatoes using red potatoes. While that is cooking, I'm gonna get started on my beef part. So I need one pound of ground beef and just cook this until it is no longer pink and then drain off any excess grease. I just use like that paper towel method. And then I'm gonna take two packets of gravy mix and just put that all over my ground beef. I'm also gonna use two thirds of water, but I end up using a lot more because it just got really, really thick, really, really fast. So I ended up putting about another two thirds a cup. So um, yeah, definitely you just kinda have to eyeball it to see how much water, how much you guys want. If you guys want a very, very thick sauce, if you guys want it to be a little bit more of like a gravy mix, you know, thick but not too thick, it's kind of whatever your preference is. So I'm just smoothing it out. And then I'm just gonna take some bread, I just have this homemade bread, and then I'm gonna take my mashed potatoes. I just use milk and butter for my mashed potatoes and mashed up the potatoes how I wanted it to. And I'm gonna put my beef right on top of that. And that is it. One of the simplest dinners you could ever have. I consider this more of like a poor man's meal, but so, but so give good. Give me your honest review. What do you think of it? Mm, that's actually really good. It's good. good. He was very skeptical mm. at first, so I'm glad you like it. What do you think? Good stuff? Mm -hmm. What do you think of it, honey? You actually like it? <sighs> How do you like it? Mm -mm. Mm -mm. Okay, I decided to pair it with some corn and then just have, yeah, this, this poor man's, I don't know what it's called, Manhattan beef, yeah, poor man Manhattan beef with some corn. Okay, now we're gonna be making cowboy cornbread casserole. And so I need two boxes of Jiffy Mix to the bottom of a medium bowl. And then we need one can of creamy corn. Also two eggs. And then two thirds a cup of milk. And then we're just gonna mix that all together until it's nice and creamy and smooth. Once it is, we're just gonna toss that to the side and now we're gonna get started on our ground beef. So I need one pound of ground beef. And we're just gonna let that cook until it's nice and brown and then I'm gonna add one tablespoon of garlic giving that a good stir getting that flavor all in that ground beef and then I'm gonna need one ounce of taco seasoning and then you're gonna give that a stir as well Add one can of Rotel, one can of corn, one can of ranch style beans, which is like my favorite type of beans. They are so delicious. One cup of sharp cheddar cheese, and then give that another good stir. Getting that cheese melted through. 
Okay, now we're going to take it over to our 9 by 13 pan. I'm just going to lightly spray that just so nothing sticks at the very bottom. We're going to put that beef mixture right into our pan. And then right on top of that, we're just going to put our Jiffy Mix and just smooth it out. And then we're just going to top it with just a little bit of cheese. You can do a half a cup to a whole cup. It's really whatever your preference is. And then I'm going to place this in the oven at 400 degrees for 35 minutes until it is nice and cooked through. You just really want to make sure and check that Jiffy Mix like in the middle. Just want to make sure that that mix is cooked through and it's not runny anywhere. This was delightful. <laughs> it was so good. Sometimes it's hard to win my husband over on um, dinners. He's just kind of particular about some things, but he gave this like a double thumbs up. He said it was so good and that we, anybody must try it. It was delicious. And I just paired it with some chips and salsa. Okay, now it's cheesy beef stroganoff, so I need one pound of ground beef. We're just going to cook that till it's nice and a brown. need one cup of water, two cups of half and half, or you can do milk, it's whatever you prefer, and then 12 ounces of egg noodles, one tablespoon of cornstarch, one teaspoon of salt, and then one-ish <laughs> teaspoon of paprika, one teaspoon of garlic powder, and then one teaspoon of onion powder. Okay, go ahead and stir all those ingredients together until it's well combined. And then I'm just smushing down the noodles just so that it's getting submerged in that liquid. And then I'm just going to let that cook for about 10 to 15 minutes until those noodles, oodles of noodles are nice and cooked through. Now I'm gonna add one cup of cheddar cheese, giving that another really good stir. And that's it. You can have this with some peas or a salad or corn, some bread, so many different options. This is like one of my favorite things to have. I just love it so much. Baby, how was the stroganoff today? Good? How about you? Did you like it? Mm -hmm. it's yeah. Really good. Good, good. I'm glad you like it. All right, now I'm doing tamale pie, which is so, so delicious. One of my husband's favorites as well. So I need one pound of ground beef, just cook that up, and then one tablespoon of minced garlic, giving that a stir, getting that well combined with our ground beef. Then I need one ounce of taco seasoning, giving that a good stir as well. One can of red enchilada sauce. One can of Rotel, and it's very rare that I have the name brand Rotel. And I need one can of corn. And then one four ounce can of green chilies. Or you guys could do jalapenos, kind of depends on how spicy you want everything to be. Give that all a really good stir. All right, and then into a nine by 13 pan, I'm just gonna dump it all at the very bottom, um, kind of smoothing it all out. And then we're gonna take some cheese. I have um, this like Monterey Jack cheese that I'm just gonna spread out. I have about a cup that I'm gonna put all over this casserole. I'm gonna put that off to the side. I'm gonna bring our bowl so that we can mix some ingredients. I need one egg, a third a cup of milk, and then our Jiffy mix. So we're just making this how the package says to make the cornbread mix. Except the fact that I'm going to be adding some sour cream. So I need two thirds a cup of sour cream as well. Give that a really good stir so it's nice and creamy. And we're just gonna put that right on top of our beef mixture. This dish is very similar to that like cornbread casserole, but it does turn out to be just a little bit different. I think we definitely prefer the cornbread casserole type, but this one's really good as well. I put this in the oven at 350 for about 40 minutes. I wanted that cornbread nice and cooked through, and we paired this with some rice and some chips and salsa, and this was just absolutely phenomenal. You guys are going to love this one.
Okay, up next is beef and pepper rice bowl. So I need one onion, one red bell pepper, one yellow bell pepper, and then an orange bell pepper. And you guys can do like mix, mix and match or and you guys can definitely add in a green bell pepper if you guys desire. I'm going to cook this with some bacon grease because I love cooking with bacon grease. <laughs> I just think it's way better than wasting some oil. Um, so if you have it on hand, definitely use it. And so I'm just going to put all of my peppers and onions into this pan. I'm going to cook it up. I'm not going to cook it all the way right away, um, just until it's almost getting to that tender spot. So I'm just going to mix it around so that they are going to cook evenly. Once all that has been cooking for just a couple minutes, I'm going to go ahead and add our ground beef to the mixture and get that chopped up and cook through properly. And by then, all of our peppers and onions should be well done and nice and tender. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and drain off any excess grease because we really don't want this to be um, any greasy. And since we added that bacon grease, it's, it's like extremely greasy. So definitely drain all that. I'm gonna add a fourth a cup of soy sauce and then one teaspoon of pepper and then just give that a good stir and that's literally all that you're gonna add to this. <laughs> it is so easy, very minimal ingredients. And once that is just cooked, you just wanna let it cook for probably another minute or so, get all that sauce soaked in. And I put this on a bed of rice and I topped it with like a little bit of mozzarella cheese, you guys, so easy, so simple. This was absolutely phenomenal. You guys are going to love this one. Next we have Southwest chili. So to my skillet, I'm just going to use some bacon grease so that I can cook up half of an onion and I just use what I had left over in my fridge. And so now I'm going to stir up one pound of ground beef and get that nice and cooked through. Once that's cooked through, I'm going to come over to my crock pot and I'm just going to dump all of that into my crock pot. Um, I love making chilies and soups in the crock pot. It's so simple and easy to do. <laughs> Leave it and forget about it. Next, I'm going to put in one cup of chicken broth and one can of chili beans, one can of regular tomatoes, and then I put in one can of like an, an Italian garlic tomatoes. Also have one can of black beans and then one can of corn also did one can of Rotel. You can never have too much tomatoes in a chili. <laughs> then I did one teaspoon of garlic powder, one teaspoon of salt, half a teaspoon of garlic salt, and then went ahead and gave this a good stir. You guys can add in some pepper if you guys wanted pepper with this. I let this cook on high for about four hours or you can do low for six to eight. This was phenomenal. I loved the Southwest chili. I did think I forgot to mention that I did add a tablespoon of um, chipotle seasoning. That's what made this so delicious. Next is a family favorite. I'm going to be making creamy tacos and I know you guys have seen me make this so many different times but this one's going to be in the crock pot. I did one pound of ground beef and then I did one tablespoon or an ounce of um, taco seasoning just giving that a good mix. Now I'm going to be adding some ranch style beans and I usually kind of do a different variety every single time I make it, but I love using the ranch style beans. And then I'm going to use one can of Fiesta nacho cheese. If you have regular nacho soup, that's fine too. Or even queso, like canned queso is absolutely phenomenal in this. One can of Rotel, one can of corn, and then we're going to add about a cup of sour cream to this mixture as well. And if you wanted to add some black beans, that would be delicious in this meal as well. Sometimes I do, but I really like the Western style beans. And then I just mixed it up and I'm going to put the lid on. I'm going to let this cook for a couple hours on low and it's so good. We're just going to put this over a bed of um, chips and you guys, this is a simple, simple, easy dinner. You don't even have to do the crock pot. You can do this over the stove. It is so simple. If I do it over the stove, it usually takes about 15 minutes to cook. It is so fast and so delicious such a great and hearty meal. All 
right, now we have tortilla lasagna. So I'm just going to take my pan of ground beef and cook it up until it's nice and cooked through. And now I'm gonna take one cup of water and then just one ounce of taco seasoning. And I'm just gonna mix that together. Once it's all mixed through, then I'm gonna take half a teaspoon of garlic powder, and then one can of black beans, and I'm gonna go ahead and rinse off. Okay, and then give that another good stir. I'm gonna take this over to the counter, and now I'm gonna be making this like sour cream mixture. So I need about a cup of sour cream that I'm gonna be putting in this bowl, and then one tablespoon of chili powder, and just giving that a really good mix. And then also I'm gonna put in half a cup of cheese once that is mixed through. We're gonna put that right into our bowl and give that another good mix. Okay, now to our 9x13 pan that I have already sprayed. I'm going to take our tortillas and they want me to layer three at a time, but I layer the first layer to doing three and then after that I kind of end up just doing two each because I didn't think three was that necessary. So I'm going to take a third of our mixture that we just made with that sour cream and just place that right on the bottom and spread that out so it's nice and even. And then we're just going to put our um, taco mixture right on top of that. So we're going to be dividing this into thirds. So I just kind of try to <laughs> even it out proportionately. And then after all the meat is on there, I'm going to take my um, salsa and just kind of layer that as well. And then also the cheese, we're going to do the same thing. And this is just going to be three layers, like I said. So I'm not going to show you <laughs> me doing all three layers, but I'm sure you guys kind of get the gist of it. Now for the top layer, I just put the tortillas and then I just put some cheese on top and kind of called it good. Um, yeah, if you guys have any sour cream you want to put on there too, I think that would be really good, but I think the cheese is just perfectly fine. And then I put this in the oven at 350 for 30 minutes until everything was nice and toasty. I like for the sides to be kind of crunchy and that's exactly what it was. This was stellar. Like I love, I love a good Mexican lasagna. It's just like one of my favorite things. So delicious. We had some chips and salsa to go with it. Um, some rice or a salad would go perfectly with this as well. Moving on to sloppy Joe pizza. So this one's going to be fairly simple. I'm just going to make sloppy Joe's kind of like how I normally would with the ground beef. You guys can add onions to it. Um, my kids typically don't prefer onions, so I don't cook with it a whole lot. I'm going to do um, one can of a sloppy joe sauce, mix that together, and then I already have like a pre-made um, bread that I already did like for the dough. Um, it's just a recipe that I've kind of always used for any pizza dough. And so I, I just let it cook for like five minutes. That way it's already kind of sort of pre-cooked. And then I just put that sloppy joe mix right on top and then put some mozzarella cheese. I let this cook in the oven for probably about 10 to 15 minutes just until that center was nice and cooked through. The dough is nice and firm. Do not want a soggy pizza whatsoever. And yeah, that's it. I cooked this, I think I, I don't know if I said, but it's at 400 degrees for 10 to 15 minutes. This was phenomenal. My kids even liked it. Um, definitely a different twist to having regular boring O pizza. Okay, now we're going to be making some cheesy taco pasta. So I need one box, a 12 ounce box of rotini noodles. And then I'm also going to need one pound of ground beef. So we're just going to put this in this like Dutch oven. I'm going to ground this up until it is nice and cooked through, uh, drain off any excess grease. And then we're going to take one ounce of taco seasoning and pour that all over. And we're just going to give that a good stir. Okay, now we're going to take one cup of salsa and then one can of Rotel. And then I'm going to give that another good stir. Okay, 
And then I'm gonna take our rotini noodles. They should be done cooking by then. And then I'm also going to put in about a cup of mild cheddar cheese. Give that a good stir. And once all of that is melted through, and it's nice and creamy, then that is it. Your dinner is ready to go. Um, I just paired this with um, some salsa, some sour cream on top, and <laughs> that is it. Um, I also paired it with like a salad, and I think I did like green beans on the side as well, or you guys can do chips. It's kind of whatever your heart's desire is, but this was delightful. My kids really enjoyed this one. Such a great dinner option. Next, we're gonna be making shepherd's pie, but I'm gonna be doing this all in the skillet. I've never done it this way before, but I thought I'd give it a try, and it was really simple and easy to do, and I like that I could all do it all in one casserole dish. So um, I'm just gonna take my ground beef and cook it up, and then I have one can of tomato soup, and then one can of green beans, which is my, typically how I would make shepherd's pie. Give that a good stir. And then I had some pre-made mashed potatoes. This is around Thanksgiving time, so I had a bunch of leftover mashed potatoes. So I just ended up using that, um, and I put it all into the skillet, um, made sure to get it nice and level. Okay, and then once it's nice and level, I usually do some type of like cheddar cheese or Colby Jack, Monterey, something like that. This time I did like a mozzarella and it was so, so good. I think I'm gonna start using a mozzarella or even just like a Monterey Jack cheese. Guys, this was amazing. I cooked this in the oven at 350 for probably 25 minutes. It didn't take very long. I just wanted it to get uh, the cheese nice and melty and it was perfect. This was so, so creamy, and I just paired it with some bread, and it was absolutely fantastic. Next, we're going to be making a taco pizza, which is actually my favorite way of making pizza. I always try to beg my kids and husband that please let's just do taco pizza tonight instead of regular pizza just because it's my favorite. I just need some um, ground beef and so once that's all cooked through then I'm just going to put in one ounce of taco seasoning giving that another good mix. Once that's mixed through, I'm gonna put that to the side. I'm going to take a cookie sheet and just really, really <laughs> grease it up because you do not want that cookie or that um, dough to stick to the bottom of that pan. So I'm gonna take my pizza dough and just roll it out and it definitely comes out thick. I don't know why it's so thick in that can, but um, I'm just going to really stretch that out to make it nice and thin. And then I'm gonna go ahead and take some taco sauce um, and just spread that all over my dough. And you gotta just have to eyeball it to see how much sauce you want. My husband does not prefer a very thick sauce. He likes it super, super thin. He ends up like scraping a bunch of sauce off. So if that's how you guys are, give me a big thumbs up and let me know in the comments below how you guys like your taco pizza or how you like pizza in general. Um, in this family, we do not like a lot of sauce. So I'm gonna take my um, taco meat, spread that everywhere, also just a thin layer of cheese. I let that cook in the oven for about 10 to 15 minutes, and then I'm gonna top it with some more shredded cheese. And then I have this like um, Taco Bell spicy ranchero sauce, um, and I'm just going to lightly put that all over. This is pretty spicy, so if you have kids, you might wanna omit this one because my kids thought it was so, so spicy. So I'm just going to put this all over and that is it. We put like a little bit of tomatoes and some sour cream on ours as like a dipping sauce. So, so good. Your family is going to love this one. Next, we're doing cheeseburger pasta. So I'm gonna need 10 ounces of this Celentini noodles, which is one of my favorite noodles. So I like to cook with that often. And then I'm gonna need one pound of ground beef. We're just going to cook that up until it's nice and brown and cook through and then drain off any excess grease. Once we have drained everything, we're gonna bring it back to our pan. We're gonna put in one block of cream cheese and about a cup of shredded cheddar cheese. Argus, maybe more like a cup and a half. <laughs> and then one half of a teaspoon of salt, half a teaspoon of garlic powder, and just a little bit of pepper, about half a teaspoon as well. And then I'm just gonna give that a good mix. It's gonna take some elbow grease for sure to get that all mixed through, um, but it will eventually melt down and it'll all come together. 
And then after that's all uh, melted through, we're gonna take one cup of milk and then stir that together until it's nice and creamy. Okay, now by that time our noodles should be done. And I didn't put all of them in, I just put most of them because I just wanna make sure that it's gonna spread evenly and it's um, the cheese. I want it cheesy, so I just wanna make sure that we had enough sauce for our noodles. And that is it. That is all that we need for this dinner. Baba, do you like your uh, pasta? Yeah. yeah. What, you do you like your pasta? Mm -hmm. Look, my bowl. It's already empty. <laughs> I gave the kids some canned fruit because I need it out of my pantry. What do you think? You like your pasta? Mm -hmm. You like your fruit too? <laughs> hey, baby. You really like it. Good deal. Cheesy. Cheesy, good. Now we're gonna be making chili mac, and this is another one of those meals where you can do ground beef or you can do sausage. A lot of times I do sausage um, just to kind of save on my budget. So I'm gonna put in one um, packet of chili seasoning sauce, of chili seasoning mix, and give that a good stir. And then I'm gonna put in half of this can of tomato paste. So about three ounces is all that you'll need. And then you'll also put in one can of Rotel or diced tomatoes with some green chilies. And then one cup of water and then give that a good stir. Okay, you're just gonna let that simmer for just about five minutes. And then you're gonna add in two cups of elbow macaroni noodles. Stir that together, make sure all those noodles are submerged in that liquid and then put the lid back on. Okay, and then after about 10 minutes, your noodles should be nice and cooked through. We're gonna add two cups of cheddar cheese, giving that another good stir. And that is it for this dinner. This is so good. This is a budget-friendly type of a meal. So, so delicious. You can have this with some vegetables. You can have this with a salad, with some bread. You can even just have it by itself. Oh, so good. Okay, and for my very last video, we're gonna be doing some crock pot creamy stroganoff. So I'm gonna start off with my pound of ground beef, getting that cooked through. Okay, now that that's cooked through, I'm going to just put that to the side and I'm gonna get my crock pot ready. We're just gonna dump all of that into the crock pot and I also need one tablespoon of garlic. And then we're gonna need some Worcestershire sauce. So I ended up putting about a teaspoon to a teaspoon and a half of Worcestershire sauce. I also need one package of onion soup mix. That onion soup mix is what's gonna give it a lot of really great flavor. And then one can of cream of mushroom soup. One cup of sour cream. Okay, and then one cup of beef broth, giving that all a really great stir. Okay, once that's all stirred through, I am just gonna put the lid on and let that cook for just a couple hours. After it's been cooking on low for a couple hours, we're gonna give it another good stir, and then we're gonna add about 12 ounces of egg noodles to this uh, soup. Okay, you just wanna give that a good stir. And as I'm stirring it, I'm realizing that there is not enough liquid for this all to cook. Um, so you can definitely go ahead and pre-cook this and leave this as is. So you can just add your noodles after it's been cooking and they're nice and al dente, or you can do it like this. And you're probably just gonna to need to add two more cups of beef broth, which is totally fine. And then after it's been cooking for another 45 minutes to an hour, this is what it'll look like. It is so, so creamy. 
oh so delicious so I actually ended up putting this like over some mashed potatoes and um, we had like some vegetables and some bread this was an absolute favorite of ours it was so so delicious I just loved how creamy it was and even if you want some more flavor you could probably put some mushrooms in in this mix in this crock pot that would be really good we're not a huge um, mushroom family but I know that that would add so much flavor I have tons of other videos just like this on my channel, so make sure you subscribe, hit that notification bell so you don't miss my next one, and I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye, guys.